Hello everybody. Uh, we are uh, still talking about the diffusion coefficient calculation um, and now we will start with the calculations of diffusion coefficient in solid phase. Um, we will discuss uh, first why this is important. Um, there are some applications that depend on the diffusivity in um, or the diffusion in, in solid phase uh, phases a lot. Um, these are very important things and this is a point that I'm gonna cover uh, in the beginning um, just to let you know why this is important for us. And then we will see the different cases of diffusivity uh, and how the, um, the conditions of the diffusion uh, might affect the diffusion coefficient. So first there are many applications that uh, include the diffusion in pores of solid. Now, pores are just small um, tubes or small openings in the solid phase. Um, and among these is the adsorption. And adsorption, as, as you know, is a process where the solid phase is absorbing or collecting uh, uh, spaces from the gas or liquid phase around it on its surface. So um, what we, we what happens in adsorption is that the the or what makes the adsorption an effective process is that it has a very large surface area so uh, this small um, bag that contains spheres of silica gel that you see in your clothes uh, or in the shoes or whatever uh, the new bag that you're 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 buying is uh, its function is to collect the water vapor from outside and what makes it very efficient is that it has a huge surface area and this surface area is not only the the outside or the outer surface area of the spheres there are uh, a lot of small pores that uh, are very uh, like long inside and they uh, provide a huge surface area uh, that can reach up to like meters per one gram uh, of, of this adsorbent and this is this is why adsorbents are very efficient uh, for for um, removing the the species from mixtures so for for the adsorbent to work the uh, the species that is absorbing let's say the water vapor in case of silica gel it it uh, diffuses all the way from outside into the or through these small tubes into the active sites which are the the, the points on the adsorbent where the uh, the water molecules can bond to so at the end of the day they they reach this this these places and they are stuck there so it's it's uh, it's working and doing its its job efficiently but one of the issues uh, or, or one of the steps that are included in the separation process is the diffusion which is this step and th this is a critical thing because if the diffusion is difficult and it's a time consuming process then the, the separation process is not going to be efficient so this is one important case um, that we we uh, require the or, or we we encounter the um, the diffusion in solid phases the second case is um, the oops i'm sorry the second case is in the case of catalytic reactions so we all know that catalysts are used um, to speed up the reaction and the way it, it does the the this function is by um, providing uh, uh, a place for the reactants to stay to spend time uh, enough long enough to perform this reaction and the way it does it again it's like the the adsorbent it provides a huge surface area through the pores that are um, that are available in the in the catalyst and the species the or the reactants diffuse all the way from outside through the catalyst into until they reach the active sites the uh, they they might be reactive but they they don't have the 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 chance to uh, to spend the enough uh, the time needed for them to react and this is what the catalyst does and once they absorb to the surface they react and after they uh, they react they dissolve from the, the surface and they dissolve or, or uh, diffuse back outside until they reach the uh, the outer surface so these are like seven steps that can be uh, uh, included in the um, in the catalytic reactions um, and you would see that in these steps there are two steps which is step number two and step number six they are not related to reaction at all they are related to diffusion this is mass transfer uh, step 
and in many cases the reaction is very fast so once the two uh, molecules uh, sit or, or, or adsorb to the surface they react instantaneously and the reaction is done and they dissolve so these steps might be very very quick um, and and in, in, in many cases the diffusion of the species until from outside until they reach the active site is a time consuming process so this if these two steps are slower uh, than the rest of the steps then this uh, reaction is a mass transfer controlled reaction and you would see that the rate uh, of reaction equation is a function of mass transfer parameters more than it is of uh, reaction kinetics or a re a chemical reaction parameters and that's why this is this is also an important thing that we have to think of that uh, you're not thinking of this just for the sake of mass transfer we can think of this for the sake of uh, increasing the rate of a reaction which is a very very critical and important thing for uh, chemical reactions so that's why this this uh, this uh, poor diffusivity or poor diffusion is is very important and to understand that more we will um, talk about what we call the uh, the uh, the mean free path which is uh, something that is related to the motion of the molecules so let's say i have a gas molecule here that is diffusing from here to there so it's not going to go in a straight lines the way we we uh, we, we walk uh, or, or move but it, it goes in a, in a wavy uh, shape uh, it's like what we see here so it goes up and down up and down until it reaches the other way um, and this uh, amplitude of the motion is called the mean free path which we give it the symbol lambda and this lambda increases as the temperature increases and this is logical because we give it energy and this energy is uh, increasing the the, the um, amplitude of the motion and it decreases with the increase in temperature because you're applying pressure i mean of the pressure because you're applying pressure um, uh, so this high pressure will reduce the uh, the mean free path so um, and and of course for for gases it is way more than uh, it is or larger than it, uh, the the case of liquids because the gases there are huge intermolecular spaces so um, it is effective in the case of gases more than it is in the um, case of of liquids uh, so this is something that we we have to know because this will um, tell us a lot about the uh, the the diffusion or or the diffusivity in the uh, in the solid pores so uh, what we will do is to um, imagine of a, a theoretical case where the pore is a perfect cylinder so it's it's it has a uniform diameter it's straight it doesn't have any irregularities so this is the ideal case where our calculations will be based in the beginning and um, uh, we have this this gas molecule um, that is diffusing through this pore so we have two options the first is to have a pore that has a diameter which is larger than um, the the mean free path of the gas molecule so in this case the uh, case the gas molecule will go and move freely without any um, hindering or any problem uh, through the pore so it's, it's gonna go as if it's going in in air so this is this is called uh, a pure molecular diffusion so this is in the case of very large pore diameter the other case is uh, the opposite if the pore diameter is smaller than the mean free path so let's see the molecule goes up and down and then at some point it 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 needs to go through the wall um, and it cannot it cannot do this it's not gonna gonna uh, break the walls of the of the uh, um, of the uh, of the pore so what what's gonna happen is it's going to change the way it's moving so instead of going in this wavy shape with the random amplitude it's going to go uh, up and down but limited with the diameter of the pore so the mean free path in this case is not the lambda it is the pore diameter now so in the, the diffusion in this case it's called the Knudsen diffusion uh, which is different from the pure molecular diffusion that's why we, we, we say molecular diffusion versus Knudsen diffusion this is what we call the Knudsen diffusion um, and uh, for the the Knudsen diffusion or to to know which is more dominant 
Um, there is a parameter that's called nuts and diffusion, which has been uh, proposed to um, kind of estimate which is important or which is more dominant. Is it the molecular diffusion or is it the nuts and diffusion? So it is lambda divided by pore, di by pore diameter. And of course, the, the lambda is in the main free pass, D is the pore diameter. Of course, if lambda is very, very big uh, compared to the pore diameter, then it's going to be more of a nuts and diffusion and the, the vice versa. So for big values of nuts and number, it's nuts and diffusion uh, is, is important. Um, and again, as lambda is a function of T and P, so as temperature increases, lambda increases and nuts and, nuts and number increases. And as the pressure increases, lambda decreases and nuts and number decreases. So this is this is um, applicable for, for both. Um, and uh, again, this, as we said before, lambda is uh, more of a gas phase parameter. It's not of a liquid phase parameter. Um, it's very very small in liquids it's not affected by the parameters like pressure and temperature as it is in case of um, in case of gases so all, all what we're gonna discuss for the rest of this part is related to gases only um, the next uh, video we will go into some details about the nuts and diffusion and, and how we do the calculations and how we get the diffusion coefficient in case of nuts and diffusion and the other cases of diffusion in solid phase so uh, I'll see you then, inshallah. Goodbye.